What advice would you give to guardsmen who are trying to develop themselves as leaders? Where should they focus? What, what should they do? Uh, focusing on, for, I have to know me. Focusing on myself, I take some assessments. You know, what's my personality? You know, what am I good at? What are my talents? What are my strengths? And then how do I take those strengths and exploit those uh, to help lead my people? Because if I have a strength, I can build my skill set much quicker with much less effort in those areas than I can where I have weaknesses. If I have a weakness, then how do I contain it? And, and there are different strategies for containing. One is I can try to build a skill set some so I can get some training. Another is reshape my job so I don't have to use that particular skill set so much. Uh, I might get a partner, someone who's really good at it, that partners with me and helps me out. Uh, you know, and you see that happen a lot, particularly in um, civilian organizations. A new CEO comes in, what does he do? He starts replacing the executive team with people he's worked with before that knows, uh, have strengths in the areas that he's not so strong in, that he trusts, so he builds a strong team around him. You know, commanders should be evaluating their teams and saying, uh, well, here's, here's an area, you know, I, I need to help this person build up some in, in this area, a little coaching, mentoring, whatever. Um, but I need to contain those areas I'm not so, so good in. So, I mean, all of that kind of comes together. And if I know myself, I know what I need around me, then I can start reading, uh, exercising. And there, there are stories in the book about different people uh, losing, you know, large sums of weight. You know, the one guy quit smoking, went on a diet. I mean, he, he lost a lot of weight to get down because he said, if I'm going to lead all these people, and it was a large organization, he said, I need to lead by example. If I'm walking around smoking all the time, if I'm way overweight and they look at me and they're going to say, why should I do what you say? You're not a very good example for me. So you've got to set the example. You've got to know the people. You've got to work with them. You've got to understand them. And you have to do that through a lot of learning and knowledge and getting out and meeting the people. Uh, you know, for some personalities, it's much easier to sit in the office, um, look at numbers, look at paper, think about uh, the future and the Army in 2030 or whatever, uh, than it is for, to go out and, and meet the people who work for them and report to them. Uh, you've got to go out and build those relationships and understand the people, hear what they have to say. I think is, if we think about all we've been talking about uh, today, it, it really comes back down to looking at the stress effect in terms of it's that change in human behavior that occurs any time we encounter stress. So every day we get up as leaders and our primary function in life as a leader is to make decisions. And we make decisions all day long, consciously and unconsciously. Every day, regardless of who we are, we will encounter stressors in our life. Okay? Some days are going to be worse than others. So we also know that when the stress level goes up, our ability to access our IQ, our intellectual capacity, our cognitive ability goes down as soon as the stress level starts to go up. We also know that as, as soon as the stress level goes up, our ability to access our emotional intelligence starts to go down. And the research now is showing, particularly as you move up into these more senior levels, more people are derailed because they lack emotional intelligence than cognitive intelligence. I mean, you don't, you don't become a brigade commander or a division commander uh, without having a pretty healthy IQ. The question is, what's your, your emotional intelligence? You know, can you work with people? Do you understand people? Can you manage your emotions? Can you manage the emotions of your people? Can you build those relationships? Uh, and part of that is understanding the stress effect and knowing that during the day, my stress is vacillating up and down. And some days I'm gonna get pushed out of my comfort zone and even the small decisions are degraded. And it could be something as simple as not uh, getting a full night's rest last night, not sleeping good, um, being in a strange place, sleeping on the ground, impacts my decisions the next day a, a small amount. But if I add enough stress, stressors, additional stressors on that, I can make some really bad decisions. 
you know, some of the research that I did uh, here at the University of Georgia, where I was able, back in the old days, I could do this, where I could keep people out for three or four days continuously. What I found was, and I would measure them every four hours, uh, I also put a 40-pound concrete block in their rucksack, and we went across country. You know, they were moving the whole time. But I would measure them every four hours, and I found out that after 24 hours, they had lost as much as 25% of their ability to do simple math, simple little addition and subtraction problems. And the scary thing was when I would say, how well do you think you did today? How, how well did you do? Oh, just as good as yesterday. They were not aware that they'd lost 25% of their ability. So we don't, we don't realize that. And I think some of our military philosophy, schools, gung-ho, says you can do anything. Just keep driving on. Drink another coffee. You can do it. You know, push, push, push. Well, when you push, 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 decision-making effectiveness is going down. And I used to, you know, I spent three years as an instructor in, in the ranger department. And I used to wonder, what happens to people when they come to ranger school? You take really smart people and you make them a ranger student and they can't do anything. They can't think. And what it is is you don't feed them, you don't let them sleep, you exercise them hard, you stress them, and then you expect them to make this decisions. It becomes extremely difficult for them to do that because the stress level just degrades it so much. But understanding that you know, can help us be more effective as leaders. Uh, at the Command and General War College, one of the projects that the, I was working on was uh, what was called then Airland Battle 2000, which was how are we going to fight wars in the, in the 21st century? How are we going to transition from, linear, uh, from a linear battlefield to a nonlinear battlefield? So part of my project was to look at high-performance leadership, high-performing battle staffs, and continuous operations. And what we were predicting in the early 80s is that in our next big war, we were the ground part was going to last 100 hours straight. And you had to have soldiers who could operate for 100 hours without sleep. And how are we going to be able to do that? Uh, it was kind of interesting. In the 91 Gulf War, the ground phase was 100 hours. And that's what we had predicted in, in the uh, really the mid-80s. And so a lot of the re sleep research that I was doing was, how do you keep guys up for that long? How do you do that? Uh, and you know, some of those techniques were applied. So anyway, I just kind of bring it back to the stress effect. Uh, it's very powerful. Uh, it's ubiquitous. It, it's out there all the time. You just have to be aware of it. Well, and it's uh, the stress that sometimes is, is very obvious and sometimes is subtle, but is always cumulative. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be able to manage that, um, in the civilian or the military world uh, certainly will help our leaders uh, as they set out to do what they're designed to do, which is make decisions. Uh, thank you very much for spending time with us today, uh, for your perspective on leadership. Uh, for anyone who is interested in, in learning more, uh, The Stress Effect uh, is Dr. Thompson's book, and you can read more about it in our review in the Professional Development Bookshop. Okay, thank you.